Ooh. Hi everybody, welcome to Faith Night Friday. <laughs> Guys, to tell you the truth, I know I've been MIA for a little bit and um, yeah, I really, I'm not really sure where I'm at. <laughs> I mean, I know, I know I'm still, can you go over there? I, I'm still in Samuel. Um, yeah, I just wanted to be outside because it's too, um, it's too warm in the house. So I thought I'd come out here, but you know, it's, it still seems hot out here as it is. Plus, plus, don't touch it. I'm drinking coffee on top of that, so it's, I, I shouldn't be drinking coffee. What are you doing? I'm seeing this little piece. Mm -hmm. Can if you leave it that thing me? that holds your. Yeah. Yeah. So, shouldn't be drinking coffee. It's like. It's just making me more hotter. So, um, okay, so again, I am still on this one. And like I said, I don't really know where I'm at right now. I'm like, <sighs> just been doing, trying to get so many other things done and uh, trying to film other things. So I'm like, I'm here, I'm there. I'm trying to build this, I'm trying to build that. I'm not, I'm not talking about physically building. I'm talking about as, as far as film is concerned. So, so this has been, yeah, a little bit on, on the back burner, even though my books are full, filling up with dust. Okay, so I still am on Samuel. And I was, I don't... I don't remember where I left you guys at. That's the problem. Um, can you sit? Hold on. So, because I know we were on Sammy. I don't remember where I left you guys off. Samuel. Hold on. Because I have been reading. And I've been like going, going ahead. And I never, I never marked it down. Uh, so I'm trying to remember. Everything's full of dust. 15, 17. I don't know. I don't know. Okay, you know what? I'm just going to come back here. I'm going to try to see. Yeah, that's the problem. I didn't mark it down. And I don't want to have to read the whole thing all over again. Okay, I know I read about Hannah, Samuel, the prophecy of Eli. So, okay, so I am just going to start on chapter three. I didn't bring a pencil out, so I'm just gonna start on chapter three. And I'm just gonna read that, it's short. And if I already did chapter three, well then I'll just take it from there and I'll go back and I'll see which, which, which chapter. Don't throw those down the stairs, okay? And I'll see what chapter um, I left off on because I didn't, I didn't even think, I. I, you know, I said, J let me just grab the books and let me just go out there and, and start reading. And I didn't even think about, well, where did I leave off? Where was I? So I didn't even think about that. So, okay, you know what? Let's just dive right in. Okay, so um, I don't want to waste your time. Okay, so we're just going to go with chapter three. I don't have my other phone with me neither so I can't I could have you know looked and seen you know what where it was 
Okay, so the Lord appears to Samuel. So we're on 1 Samuel uh, chap chapter 3. In those days when the boy Samuel was serving the Lord under the direction of Eli. Hippo, can you play on the grass? Uh, on the direction of Eli, there were two, there were a few messages from the Lord and the visions from him were quite rare. One night, Eli, who was now almost blind, was sleeping in his own room. Samuel was sleeping in the sanctuary where the sacred covenant box was. Before dawn, while the lamp was still burning, the Lord called Samuel. He answered, yes, sir, and ran to Eli. He called me. Here I am, but Eli answered, I didn't call you back to bed, go back to bed. So Samuel went back to bed. The Lord called Samuel again. The boy did not know that it was the Lord because the Lord had never spoken to him before. So he got up and went to Eli and said, you called me, here I am. But Eli answered, my son, I didn't call you, go back to bed. The Lord called Samuel a third time. He got up, went to Eli and said, you called me, here I am. Then Eli realized that it was the Lord who was calling the boy. So he said to him, go back to bed. If he calls you again, say, speak Lord, your servant is listening. So Samuel went back to bed. The Lord came and stood there and called as he had before. Samuel, Samuel, Samuel answered, speak, your servant is listening. The Lord said to him, someday I am going to do something to the people of Israel that is so terrible that everyone who hears about it will be stunned. On that day, I will carry out all my threats against Eli's family from beginning to end. I have already told him that I am going to punish his family forever because his sons have spoken evil things against me. Eli knew they were doing this, but he did not stop them. So I solemnly declare to the family of Eli that no sacrifice or offering will ever be able to remove the consequences of this terrible sin. Samuel stayed in bed until morning. Then he got up and opened the doors of the house of the Lord. He was afraid to tell Eli about the vision. Eli called, Samuel, my boy. Yes, sir, answered Samuel. What did the Lord tell you? Eli asked, don't keep anything from me. God will punish you severely if you don't tell me everything he said. So Samuel told him everything. He did not keep anything back. Eli said, he is the Lord. He will do whatever seems best to him. As Samuel grew up, the Lord was with him and made come true everything that Samuel said. So all the people of Israel from one end of the country to the other knew that Samuel was indeed a prophet of the Lord. The Lord continued to reveal himself as Shiloh, where he had appeared to Samuel and had spoken to him. And when Samuel spoke, all Israel listened. Okay, so at that time, I think everybody knows, you know, that Samuel was the one that was prophesying. He wasn't a king. He was just a great prophet. Okay. So I'm going to, let's see. Like I said, I didn't write it down. So I'm going to put this here. And I'll know that I left off, off at four, at chapter four. Now, if I already went ahead from chapter four, then I'll give a brief summary of what I read and then I'll continue on from there. Okay, as here, I don't, doo, doo, doo. I think I already read this, I'm not sure. 
I mean, I could read it again, but I think I already did. I have checked off that I read 3, 1 Samuel 4, 7, day 4, 1 Samuel 8, 11. Again, I could have been on 18 and 17 because it's not marked here. But again, I'll find out for sure. Okay. Um, okay, so... I'll read the little story about what Samuel is about or what we're trying to get from the story of Samuel. Now, I already watched the, I already watched, um, the movie <laughs> and I, I even watched the animated ones as well, just the same way that I did with, um, with, uh, what was it with Ruth? I did the same thing. So. I watched a movie with Ruth and Boaz and um, and Naomi and all of them, and then, then I also watched the little um, uh, animated as well. I, I just, you know, I wanted to get it from both ends, you know, the nice part, the cute part, whatever. Uh, okay, so let's see. No, I think. I don't think I read 2 Samuel. So I'm not going to go there. I'm going to read in 1 Samuel. So in Samuel 1, we find the story of a woman experienced a void in her life. Her name was Hannah. And she was childless because the Lord had closed her womb. To make matters worse, her husband's other wife, Penina, did have children. Keep in mind that children were a sign of worth and a basis for security. So the mere fact that the Lord had not allowed Hannah to have children left her feeling worthless, incomplete, and hopeless. At the time, she didn't know what God had in store for her. She could only see what she didn't have and couldn't do. And, put, and this put her in a bad mental and emotional state. Hannah felt so much stress that she didn't eat. Her husband, Elkanah, El Elkanah, tried to make her feel better by giving her a double portion of his possessions, but that wasn't what she wanted or needed. So what she did do, she didn't complain, blame her husband, or start a fight with Pinana, Pinina out of jealousy. She went to the temple and to pour out and began to pour out her soul to God. The problem with many of us is that we tend to pour out our souls to the other people hoping they will give us answers when most times they can only offer us their opinions. We have to take our struggles to the one who has the power to answer our prayers and solve our problems. That's what Hannah did. She went to the temple and prayed so intently that Eli, the priest, thought she was drunk and asked her when she'd be ready to quit drinking. She responded, no, Lord, I am a woman of sorrowful spirit. I have, I have drunk neither wine nor intoxicating drink, but have poured out my soul before the Lord. That's when Eli told her to go in peace and that God would grant her what she asked for. After that, Hannah went on her way and was no longer sad. Of course, if you read at the end of the story, you know that Hannah was ultimately responsible for the birth of Samuel, one of the greatest prophets recorded in scripture. But even before she conceived, it gave Hannah peace to be able to pour out her soul to the Lord and to speak her truth to Eli. Okay, so let me go back here because I think what I read was, the, what was it? I read three, so, okay. So I read three, so we're gonna go to the commentary. And this is the quick commentary. Um, let me see if I have anything here. 
Hey, yeah. When can I bring coffee with you? Because it's been a long time since we shared our coffee. I uh, don't know. Maybe I could. Well, no, it hasn't. It's only been a, a few days ago. Okay, so oh, I do. I okay. Again. Well, maybe tomorrow. Okay. So I do have first. I did have this between um, five and six, but it's uncertain because I don't. I'm, I don't remember. What you um, A story about um, a, a, a story about the Book of Samuel. Okay. So. So let's just read the commentary of what it has to say about in Samuel, First uh, Samuel, third chapter. Sanctity, a godly life can develop in spite of ungodly influences surrounding it. So it was Moses, Egypt's Daniel in Babylon, and our Lord in Nazareth. Samuel was not isolated, but he was separated. Can I put this up? No. He belonged to the Lord daily. He was in contact with sin, and yet he was not contaminated by it. He was a living sacrifice and experienced God's transforming power. So that's all we got in Samuel 3. Then it goes on to Samuel 4. So these, all these commentaries that I'm going to be reading are really going to be um, short. So authority. Even though Eli was not the most godly person, uh, was not, uh, even hmm. though Eli was not the most godly example or mentor, young Samuel submitted to his authority. We submit to man's authority for the Lord's sake for we serve God not men we trust him to protect us and work out his will even in the lives of ungodly people fidelity God gave his message to Samuel because he knew Samuel was faithful the lad was accustomed to being alert to Eli's voice and to obeying immediately so when God spoke Samuel was ready being faithful in a few small things prepares you for bigger things and that was in Matthew 20 25 21 so uh, that is true God can trust you with the little things he can trust you with bigger things hearing the voice of God did not keep Samuel from doing the work of God he went right back to the old tasks the nation would now listen to Samuel's words, for they knew he was God's spokesman. So, yeah. So, I've been reading, you know, I've been going ahead and reading. Um, I think I already am um, already to, to the point. Don't do that. I'm already at the point where I've been reading about what happened to... Ah, uh, what was his name? Not King David. Um, I forgot his name. I want to stand on well, anyway, it was it was the other king. I'm gonna stand on the cross. Huh? I said I'm gonna stand on the cross. It wasn't Eli. Okay. Claim king. <laughs> And I, and I was keeping notes at one point, and then I stopped. So Samuel ended up finding, oh, Saul. That was, his, that was his name. So Samuel, as he got older, he the people of Israel were, they wanted a king. And he ended up finding Saul. And, uh, well, <clears throat> just like Saul, just like Samuel, Saul kind of like did the same thing with his family. And then... Saul was like taken out of the picture, but not until Saul, until Samuel found David, and then David, that's when he, he became king, officially, officially king. But I'm going to get to, I'll get there, I'll get there, and I guess, he's going to stay inside next time.
<laughs> yeah, you were. Are you? Yeah. And um, I'll give a brief summary of what I read, and then I'll come back, and I'll try to get to, I'll try to catch up to where, not where I'm at. I, I need for you to, to be where I left you off, because I already had, like, been reading, you know, because I just got really into it, you know, I was just, I, I got to read more about this, you know. So, mostly everything in Samuel up to this point is about... It's about, <laughs> it's about us being obedient. So, <laughs> we, we have to strive and learn, and learn to listen to the voice of God. So when he speaks and if, if, if and when we feel like, you know, we can't be obedient or we can't, we need to pray about it and find out, you know, why we can't or what's stopping us or you know ask for prayer so that God can give you the strength that you need to carry on um, what it is that he called you to do <laughs> anyway so that's where I'm at right now I'm so sorry it took me a while I'm like it's just uh, been trying I didn't know whether I should do it in the house and didn't know I wanted to be you know I've been trying to come out here but um yeah so okay so that's where we're at right now and i'll try to um be more consistent with um you gotta stop please stop can you stop can you give me a minute can you give me a minute okay it keeps making me forget what i want to say so it's not yeah so I'm trying to be consistent and trying to get back into the rhythm of, um, uh, because I don't want to do a Faith Night Friday and do, and then do this in the morning. Because every time I try to do it at night and six o'clock or seven o'clock rolled around, then it ended up being too late. And by the time I try, don't play with that. Hit both. Don't play with that. Leave that alone. Don't play. There's wires in there. Don't 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 mess with that just leave it alone okay well all you had to do was just close it. you don't have to bang it and bang it and bang it just close it so it would take me a long time by the time i did it like get around 7 7 30 by the time i did the video by the time i downloaded it by the time i uploaded it i was like it was like already 11 11 30 and i was like i didn't i don't want it that late i don't want it being that late so then i said okay well then i'll do it in the morning but then like no because it's faith night friday not faith morning you know which didn't even sound right faith morning friday it's faith night friday so i'm still trying to keep it towards nighttime. so i'm like okay so i gotta try to figure out you know in between and try to figure out how and, and what time to upload it i also have been like experimenting with different um what do you call it uh recording uh cameras so I have my my uh, my uh canon camera i have my um my other uh camera that i'm not using my other and then i have two phones and with one phone i can upload with no problems but and but with this one this is um an iphone and i can just upload straight away without having to use my computer or anything else i could just straight away just put it out there so that's a come i decided just to come out here and do it get it done and you should be seeing this in about in about a half an hour <laughs> that's pretty fast so for me it's always the faster the better and with everything else you have to edit and it takes time but with this I could just do it live no, not live live but live and upload it within minutes it's done you got it <laughs> okay guys so <laughs> like efficiency again my name is Emma and so glad you caught me and we will catch you 
next Friday <laughs> at around this time. <laughs> Bye.